Hello. Wah wah wee wah. Excuse me. I I we just watched Borat. Um, I'm I'm gonna quote Borat now. It's it's the year two thousand four or whenever the I, first one came out. It was definitely later than that. Two thousand five, I think. Maybe. I don't, oh God, I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Um, Hi. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. How you doing? What's up? Hey. It's definitely only been a week. Yep, for seven sure. Days. It's, it's been seven days since, since our last podcast. Yes, um, I hope you guys had an enjoyable seven days because this is a weekly podcast. And it came out a week on ago. time. I hope you guys had a great week. Mm-hmm. It's only been a week since we've last seen you. Yes. Uh, but if it hadn't, that would Stop be... Stop talking, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we missed uh, the last couple of weeks of podcasts just because uh, I had to do the seasonal video and that was like a, a big, big project. It's always a big project. Big um, energy drain on everybody, on you and on the editors. Mm-hmm. E- and, energy drain on everybody. <laughs> and and I had like two big videos back to back with that and it was, just, it was just a little bit of poor planning on my part, but no. uh, we're back in it. Um, we're going to roll with it. Um, and if there are other interruptions, uh, we would rather so give you guys pitch. a good podcast. Oh, well, that was very different than what I said. Yes, the thing Jeff said. <laughs> today, today we are coming to you to speak about dubs, dubs yes. that we like. Good dubs. That's kind of vague, but we figured that a nice broad topic is a good thing to come back to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're just going to go back and forth. Some of them, I think you haven't. I think yeah. No, you've seen most of the ones I'm going to mention, but yeah, and I think and you've I haven't. Seen... No, I haven't seen most of the ones I don't think that you're going to mention, but that's okay. Yeah, Some, um, somebody here is more open-minded to watching new things than somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um. So which which dub should we start with? You go ahead and start. You go ahead and I'll, start. I'll start? Um, yeah, okay. you are much better at this talking thing. I gotta you rev gotta up work those. Your way up. I gotta rev up those brain cells. You know, <laughs> all five of them. All two of them. <laughs> Get the hamster running. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, like, most of my picks are like. Well, actually, why, why don't we start with the ones that we we mutually agree? Yeah. Are there good? was there was two that came up right away. Yeah. Um. That um, we were just like, no, we both agree right away that those are great. And we can just kind of move on because everybody does. Which FMA and Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Those are those are just everybody knows those are like top tier dubs. I don't. Think... I don't know. I thought ReZero was going to be in that list too, but I guess is that did I just spoil the ReZero is pretty contentious, actually. Like like I like we both like the ReZero. Dub. Really? Yeah. People. Like, d- I I could I could pull up some comments from my from my uh, uh, YouTube uh, my last video where I used a bit of the ReZero dub. Some people just hate it. I love it. I think it's great. I, I think it's like one of my top favorite dubs ever. Yeah. Like like Sean Chiplock absolutely kills it as Subaru. Every everybody kills episode. it as everybody yeah. while everybody's dying. It's so good. Yeah. I really like how they did um Roswell's voice too, like like the 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 sort of lyrical way he speaks. Yeah, I'm like really <laughs> sensitive to those kind of things. I'm mm-hmm. really sensitive to like gimmick voices and stuff really like even yeah. in japanese if it's not just like a dub exclusive thing um in japanese too i'm really like i i something about gimmick voices i just have a s- low tolerance for them mm-hmm. um and there's not a single one in ReZero that i don't that you can't like. stand yeah, yeah and i'm also really uh, oversensitive about uh screams too yeah those are one of those things that can also just like make or break it for me um, and I think all of the screams in ReZero, like that, that could have been a losing point for it, me at least. And I think that they're all incredible. They and scream real good. <laughs> they are all very painful sounding and I really like it. I think that, that they nail it. It's interesting that. that you've got like a stream, uh, scream sensitivity because, uh, she's gotten into VTubers lately. <laughs> and that's well, no, like I mean, like, I mean, like, like it can ruin my, my enjoyment immersion. In if you like know a what story, I mean. if the scream is like sounds fake, yeah. If it sounds fake, or if it doesn't, yeah. If it doesn't suit the level of like, there's a certain level of intensity, right? Yeah. But like, like if it doesn't sound like it's 
appropriate to the scene. Yeah, yeah, it can tear me out really easily. It can mm-hmm. tear me out and remind me that it's it's voice acting and stuff. You know what I mean, and not make me feel like I'm watching a complete thing. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy for like a scream to just sound like a person in a booth and yeah. not like uh, you know like a real situation. That doesn't apply um, to Dragon Ball though. <laughs> that rule for me does not apply to Dragon <laughs> Ball. That I there's no such thing. You know, <laughs> like. I mean, Dragon Ball. There's no is such just... thing as scream immersion in Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is just a series about a bunch of guys with really bad constipation punching each other. Yeah, yeah, and screaming a lot. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's yeah. not get too. That's oh boy. <laughs> okay, maybe this is a hot take. Um, I could potentially suggest to somebody watch the dub over the sub for ReZero. Yes. Um, like if I if I knew somebody was somebody who like enjoyed dubs like i'm honestly somebody who is more willing to watch a show if there's also a good dub Mm -hmm. so like i i will go into it and tell people that you know i'll be like if you're you know if you're iffy on it maybe give the dub a shot because that might sell you more on it sometimes yeah i i i think that re-zero is a good example of that where like like both both are really good. That's the thing. Like like yeah the yeah sub nothing is nothing against the, like yeah, the original yeah. nothing against it at all. Um and I wouldn't. There's not everybody I would say oh watch the dub instead mm-hmm. too. Um, but if somebody is just like ah, I have trouble like following the Japanese and like or if they the were emotions. just like iffy about watching it, I yeah. would be like, or you could watch the dub. There's not a lot of shows that I'd be like, or you can watch the dub if they're iffy on it. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, Rezero is definitely one of them for me. Yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's on that level where you could watch either or. Um, I was about to say that I'm like still shocked that people don't like the dub, but then again, I don't engage with people, so yeah, <laughs> I like avoid engagement on those things. So well, I mean, there's I'm... there's people who just don't like any dub. Yeah, true. You know, like Y'all like <laughs> <laughs> they're not here anyway. They're not here anymore. Y'all suck. Yeah, yeah. Just to have a more open mind toward things. Yeah, like it's that's it. Like. People can't, some people can't enjoy things unless it's in their native language. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm I mean, fight you over it. We, we touched on this in the last podcast episode. I, I like when I was younger, most of the stuff that I watched was on justdubs.net, and you can put two and two together and figure out what kind of website that was. <laughs> I just can't imagine being the kind of Grinch who's like, dubs bad, blanket. Yeah. I don't know. I just... I mean, I don't think there are that many people who, like, blanket it anymore. But, like, there are... You know, there's a few who just refuse. Um, And I kind of understand that because sound design is really important in anime. Um, You know, like... And and there was a period where, like, a lot of dubs just, like, screwed it up. That's true. The four kids era, uh, (laughs) which we're not going to get into today. Um, Not today, but we want to talk about that soon for sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, like like a lot of a lot have a lot of anime have been ruined by like bad dubs. But I guess the point of view some people might have, if I'm going to try mm-hmm. my best to approach it from understanding the, the other side of this, <laughs> <laughs> from the view of the Grinches, is that I guess a bad dub could put people off from a show, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, but then again, those kind of people also don't usually want those kind of people as a fan of their precious show. So yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> kind of gatekeepy in yeah. general. <laughs> so maybe uh. not. But anyway, Rezero's dub is freaking great. It's really good. It's great. Um, they pack in the emotions. I think pretty much every voice that they cast is like on point for the character. Mm-hmm. Um, I maybe like maybe some people just get like a certain voice in their head and have trouble like assigning that to if somebody's too different Mm -hmm. from from what they had but that's Mm -hmm. the only reason i can think of i well i have that with like nostalgia things Mm -hmm. that i will agree i have that with nostalgia like i will say i'm having a hard time watching some parts of like that first episode of yashihime yeah did not hit me as hard as it should have because i had none of the the attachment i've never seen inuyasha in japanese so yeah, yeah, you, you're all a. Me you're makes, not about me makes a strong statement. Also, me five minutes later, <laughs> but also me. <laughs> yeah, you're all you're all about Kagome, not Kagome. <laughs> um, but you like 
you've got that attachment in reverse with some things like like card captor sakura even though the canadian dub isn't i can't watch good card, I, you, I can't watch, can't watch it watch in it japanese sub. i can't i can't do it i don't know what it is i just can't fucking do it mm-hmm. anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. let's move on um yes. another dub we both agreed was like really really good and i think kind of a good dub can kind of save like a series yes. that's a little mediocre i think it, we both agreed that the dub like for ace attorney yes um we're yeah, gonna the, get there i think we both agree the dub was great for ace attorney yes um the ace attorney anime like when i first saw it i was a little disappointed with it because yeah, it yeah. was it's we're both very hardcore ace attorney fans like yeah very hardcore ace we'll, attorney we'll fans. talk about that soon yes too. we want to do a dedicated um, ace attorney podcast really bad but go yeah ahead, go ahead go ahead yeah no the the dub just like elevates what felt like a, it, it was an okay anime like i was a little disappointed with it with the it. first half was mm, yeah the, i was disappointed with the first half and we've never seen the second half the second half overall was better like the mm-hmm. animation was better everything and we've never seen the second half in japanese for what it's worth but but the dub definitely saved the first half for yeah it definitely is the only reason i could get through the first half it it adds back in that feeling of Japanifornia that's yes, kind of missing that you from the subs. You can't steal my term. <laughs> you learned that from me. Okay. You can't steal my Japanifornia term. We can get I've more into that. I've been using that forever. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think that the dub brought back the like true Ace Attorney charm mm-hmm. um, that was missing from the anime. Yeah. Um, there was just, yeah, something missing and... And it kind of made Gumshoe feel more like Gumshoe. Yeah, like and, the quirkiness and... of the voice actors just nailed it. They just absolutely nailed it. And like I felt like they made up for all of the like strong characterization that was left out. There you yeah. go. There was like a lot of a lot of strong, strong characterization that yeah. was left out. Especially especially uh the bloopers are mm-hmm. amazing. They're just amazing. If you're not gonna watch the anime, watch the bloopers. Yeah, I would say that. Um, Are you trying I mean, to remember? I mean, that's true them? for most most dubs. Are you if, trying to remember the, the the? Yeah, I can't remember them off the top of my head. So funny. The only there's bloop- so many of them too. Sorry, there's so many of them. I think they're up on Funimation's YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the only anime bloopers that really stick in my mind are um, the FMA ones. Yes, everybody mm-hmm. has seen and loves the FMA ones. The but Rainbow Connection. For me, for me, the Ace Attorney ones are like up there. And that is, I think, why it's so good is that there's so many bloopers because the voice actors just got it. So um, the, the the bloopers are in the same style as the FMA bloopers where they're not like the voice actors personally goofing off. They're like in, in character, character goofing yeah. off. And there's so many of them that it shows how well they got the characters down. Yeah. Like all of the bloopers are in character. And they're 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 just funny, and it means that they were still in character in those moments, and it means they just got the soul of them. Yeah, ha- just watch them. I have like a deep appreciation for all the Ace Attorney characters, and yes. like, yeah, I it's... feel like everybody had justice, no pun intended, done. Yeah, I can't think of anybody I was really unhappy with. Um, on the subject of bloopers. The, the like extreme end of uh, end of that uh, of, of like the dub saving a show would be the the straight up fixed dub and there aren't many of those but I mean we would be remiss if we didn't at least mention ghost stories because um, that dub is just legendary it's a shame that more dubbing houses can't like go to that degree just do that. of just like straight up spoofing the bad show that they're adapting um I mean, you know, you got to get the license holder to admit it's a bad show and Good like give that. you that give you that permission. Unfortunately, um, but yeah, uh, can you think of any other uh, shows that were like saved by their dubs? Ace Attorney is the only one that really stands out to me. Honestly, that one is like always. Gonna... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think. Um, the one area that a dub can like really, really help is with like a comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially if you're like newer to anime or you you're not that familiar with Japanese as a language, 
comedy is a very difficult thing to subtitle and yeah. a difficult thing to appreciate in different languages. And like we're both at the point where we can appreciate what's funny about the original like Nietzsche Joe voices. Yeah. Um, but like a good dub can really enhance uh, mm -hmm. your as an English speaker your appreciation of a good comedy. Um, and for me, like the emblematic example of that would be Golden Boy. Uh, not necessarily like a technically excellent dub, but just goddamn, they had so much fun with the characters. I mean, you know, Kentaro Oe is just a, a real zany character to begin with. Um, but when you like translate lines like, if only my hand was my penis into, <laughs> you know, into English, like, um, I, I wish I had, I wish I'd had the foresight to look up whoever played Kentaro in that dub, but he just nails every single line. He mm -hmm. like takes it just to the right level of over the top. And I think in general, you know, like, like there's a lot of comedies that benefit from that. Um, the flip side of that though, is that comedy dubs can age very poorly. Yes. Um, yes. Like, one of my favorite shows is Cromarty High School. I used to love that dub. Looking back on it, though, they, they like, they, they sure do drop an F slur in, like, the second episode. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, comedy is just one of those things that's a product of its time. And, like, little things like that can really throw a dub off. But, yeah, overall, I, I'd say those are still too I'm trying really. to think of other like there's definitely a ton that i've liked but i'm trying to think of other like really good comedy dubs nozaki-kun like, I've, I've never fully watched we, we the watched dub a couple episodes, I, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. watch the full but i'm trying to think of like truly like timeless comedy comedies i can't think of any though i'm gonna we're gonna finish this and then like after it's posted there will probably be a comment from me a one word comment that is just the series name with a sad emoji next to it. <laughs> Look out for it. <laughs> Look out for that in the comments below, unless you're listening to this, in which case... Go to the YouTube video and look for it in the comments. <laughs> Please yep. give us that view. Basement Life Podcast the YouTube channel. It doesn't have a URL yet. That's why we need the view. Yeah, yeah, we need the views <laughs> so to that we can the get a URL. URL. Um, yeah, I'm just... I know, like, I know there's a lot of good comedy dubs, but I'm yeah. like... Uh, I think I might have written one down here. Uh, nope. Well, I, I mean, Captain Tyler is the one of the other dubs that I wrote down. And mm -hmm. that one's just... Like, that one I feel is excellent for different reasons. Because that one, like, it, it was literally the CEO of the company who dubbed its favorite anime. And, like, he... he That's always a good sign. Yeah, yeah. Like, he personally committed to, to just making it great. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't seen my Captain Tyler video, check that out. It's really good. Tyler... You put a lot into it. You put a lot into it. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I Not an anime I like, but you put a shit ton into it. I can give you that. Yeah, I, that was that was a big project. The one thing I can say that sells Captain Tyler, because um, it's, it's a hard series to sell, but in the first episode, the main character seduces a supercomputer into su exploding, and um, he just keeps getting more awesome from there. <laughs> uh it's it's real good it's real good it's real and the good. dub is really good yeah it's they had a bunch of the pokemon voice actors in mm -hmm. it like uh a lot of people in the video were like is that misty and yeah um yeah misty yeah, it played is misty. a couple roles in it um it's one of crispin freeman's first roles in like uh the the lead as tyler mm -hmm. and he kills it um yeah just a that's a really great dub you think uh, it's a good option for people if they're looking for like a because there's also people who like me I'm sometimes looking for like I can I need something going if I'm what I'm doing is quiet mm -hmm. right I need some kind of audio thing going um which for me is why I gravitate towards dubs a lot too yeah. uh, especially comedy dubs because those ones you don't always have to watch or whatever so would you say that that's a good one for somebody who's like hey I need a long it's long right yeah, it's 24 episodes. Okay, not that long. But if somebody's like, hey, I need something to watch, you know, on my second monitor while I'm working or something, you think the dub's a good option for that one? Or 
Yes and no. Like, it's a good dub, but it's also got, like, a lot of visual humor in it that might not translate if you're... I mean, you're still, like, watching it back and forth. I guess you don't work that way. So. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like to focus and, like, pay attention to the stuff. Okay, let me rephrase the question. Let me rephrase the badly phrased question or shit question. Uh, is it acceptable to only watch the dub, you think? Yeah, absolutely. You think yeah. you, get, you get the perfect... Yeah, you definitely get, like, a good Captain Tyler experience out there of the go. dub. Um, for, pretend that I didn't ask the other question. Don't cut it out. Don't cut it out. Leave my, leave my two brain cells on display. But let's pretend that wasn't there. <laughs> great question, Yazzie. Great question. Excellent question, Yazzie. Um, I, we're talking about space operas, so we should throw to your first choice. Because uh, I was actually going to cut in and say there's one we didn't think of. We did for once in our lives actually discuss what we wanted to do here, and yeah. there was one we just completely forgot, which is we cut it for excitement. <laughs> B stars. B stars, yeah. The I, so stars I've dub never really excellent. watched B stars. I've only secondhand heard it because when you watched it, I was just too busy. Yeah, I was like swamped with work. I was way too busy to watch it, and I was like, "It's like it's clearly really good." You don't wait for me. You watch it. So I heard it in the background, um, but I know the dub is really good. So you go ahead and talk about that one because I just know it's good. But you can say why besides the fact that that it's got good Kyrie. I mean, it's just Kari. Kari. Why do I always say Kyrie? Why do I always do that? <laughs> I mean, that one, that like that aspect of it, like kind of fucks me up a little because it's the voice actress for Kari from Digimon, and it, who was one of my first anime crushes, yep. doing the Kari voice, uh, except it's for a very, very horny rabbit. And it just like... That that just like brain <laughs> some very deep id shit. <laughs> but yeah, the V Stars dub in general was like really really highly praised. Yeah, yeah. They I don't even know if it. I've heard it in Japanese. Um, the, I don't. The, think, I mean, the like Japanese is also. Great. I, I think you watched some of it, but I just I was never around to hear it. But I mostly like all the clips I even saw posted around and stuff were in English. Everybody really. I don't think we need to like suggest that to people. Everybody knows. Beastars. Yeah, Netflix has been doing a really good job with their original dubs in general. Yeah, I will say they always seem to be yeah hitting it good with those. There's some shows that like I wouldn't watch dubbed, like Japan Sinks, for instance. Like the the interplay of language there is just so work, yeah. important. Um, Actually, and, though, that kind of leads into one of mine. But yes. go ahead if you want to keep going. But. Yeah, I was just gonna say the Great Pretender dub is also like fucking amazing yes. man um one of the ones on my list though is ping pong the animation yes um and that is one that does have the same kind of language integration into it with english um, um butterfly joe being an english teacher yeah uh but even without that i still think it's an incredible dub um and in fact i think i'd like the dub personally better than the japanese i don't think I'm, i don't think the dub is better like if like like as proven fact or something yeah but like from a personal standpoint even without the english teacher jokes the the all of his like speaking english mixed in with things mm -hmm. i still think it's a really incredible dub and probably one of my all-time favorites yeah no it uh peko and smile really like pack the emotion in there yeah um, it, it like i think it hits me 10 times harder emotionally uh, like a lot harder emotionally and it just speaks to me more the way they convey it yeah. um it yeah it just i just understand it more it makes me f hurt more <laughs> it makes me feel more feelings um just I, personally i also like appreciate that they kept um his, when his name i forget the the chinese right, exchange yes, student yes yes like, that's they did the other really thing they did an incredible job where they have i don't know if they're a native Chinese speaker. I, I don't know anything about that. I've never even looked into the, who the voice actor is. I, I have no way to tell if somebody is speaking with an accent or not. But they they chose to actually dub it or leave it instead of dubbing it into English or having it be in Japanese with subtitles in the original. Yeah. Yeah. They have um, entire episodes that are that are just him. Um, yeah. He, like there's a lot of chinese in in the english dub of uh ping pong it's like it's really good yeah yeah it's just they but i like i just like that they left that in his accent really, sounds really natural too. i mean we wouldn't know we have truly no way of telling yeah um we have no way of telling um from my perspective as like a completely ignorant person sounds <laughs> definitely never even listened to that much but like 
yeah, it, it just it doesn't ruin the flow at all. And yeah, I think the ping pong dub is one that I might even suggest people watch instead if they've looked at it and they're like, eh, about it. Give the English part a shot. That might speak to you the same way it spoke to me. Yeah. I don't know. Ping pong's amazing. Please watch it. Ping Please. pong. Is, yeah. No, that's. <laughs> That show will can... make you cry. It will. It will. It will make you cry and it'll make you just feel a lot of feelings about yourself personally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, now I'm feeling feelings. But The hero returns. The, the hero re- and And oh. yeah, man. I'm feeling feelings. People can fly. We have, we have the manga behind us. Viz sent it to us. Back there. Yeah. All of its glory. Viz Viz sent us a Thank COVID you. care package. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Viz. Thank you. And she claimed that one. I did. I did. It I'm not on. allowed to read it. I, right away. I was like, mm. but yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch it. I'm not even allowed to look at it, really. I'm too busy like thinking about ping pong to be able to explain to the people why they need to watch ping pong. Um Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's just such a good dub. They did a great job. I think it's like one of the best character arcs in anime too. Mm-hmm. Like like there's a lot of really unexpected character surprises in that. Um it's just it's just incredible. It's just incredible and the across dub, the board. And and yeah, the dub just magnifies that for me. Mizaki Yuasa tends to get pretty good dubs i don't know if he like involves himself in the dubbing process for stuff we also would have no idea about that but yeah a lot of his shows are really well dubbed um i mean part of that is that netflix is picking them up now but uh yeah uh let's see what's what's next um do you want to do another one or you want to bounce back to me we have our little lists where we're yeah, like, yeah, let's actually phone. stay on topic instead. <laughs> That's just letting the train of we're so tired we want to ramble go. I mean, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, pick All something, right. pick something off your list. Uh, well, one of my favorite dubs from when I was uh, younger, uh, back in the days when I had to like buy anime DVDs to watch series, um, was was Beck Mongolian Chop Squad. Mm, that's one I've never seen. That's one you're always trying to get me to watch. I, I know you say. love it. I would know you. I, I like. I know that you would. Here's love the it. thing. I'm really mentally stubborn. Mm-hmm. Like my my attention span is stubborn. Yeah. Right. My brain is so stubborn. It is so hard for me to like accept giving something new a chance. Yeah. Um. Because it's hard for my attention span. So it's like. Ah, you know, I like, I know you watch it, we'll watch it someday. Peer pressure me, guys. Peer pressure me. Once you've decided. Interactions in the comments. Leave us interactions via peer pressuring me. Yeah, yeah. Please bully her into watching Beck. Um, I volunteer my feelings as tribute for interactions. (laughs) But yeah, you you like, you know what you like. That's the thing. You know what you like (laughs) and you know what you don't like. More importantly, you like, or you Rather, I know what my brain thinks, thinks it doesn't it, like. Yes, exactly. Um, which, so like, you're like, I hate fantasy. Oh my God. I hate fantasy. I, I, and, I then, hate and then fantasy. you're like, Escaflone, please. I hate, I Fire don't Fire Emblem. I, I, I hate <laughs> fantasy. I do. I, I will stand by that. ReZero is I, one of your favorite anime. <laughs> I truly, I truly don't like. <laughs> you just don't like J.R.R. Tolkien specifically. I don't know. I don't know, but then my brain go. I know, like fantasy. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna make everybody hate me. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I feel like it's it softens the blow when I say I know, I know. Okay, I know that it's painful to listen to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and that's why your motto is, "You're always right." And I don't take criticism. <laughs> Carry on, carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the the Beck dub is just like phenomenal. Like they they got every character down, but the really impressive thing about it, and I think it's one of Funimation's best dubs, because it was back in the era where they were doing they were like fucking with doing English adaptations of anime songs. Um, quite a few of those were sung by Hatsune Miku, and I'll begrudgingly admit admit that Hatsune Miku 
is a great singer when Hatsune Miku isn't singing uh, random Christian hymns. Um, there's a lot of like <laughs> Hatsune Miku dub songs that hit me hard. Um, but uh, yeah, for Beck, they brought like the all the musical talent that they were uh, they had in their stable out to just dub every single song and it helped that a lot of them were already in English because it's like it's like a, a classic rock show it's about like guys in a classic rock band and like guys who specifically like old English rock and and English songs in general as much as they like J-rock mm -hmm. um and and so a lot of the songs in Beck were already in English uh and they're really good in that right like Full Moon Sway hits me like ugh um and and uh you know the opening i was made to hit in america just just great and they didn't dub that over which i appreciate but the thing is all of the in show songs they tweaked the english so that it was more like grammatically correct and had better like flow and meter um and just they knocked it out of the park with pretty much every song um, because I was a loser and I didn't listen to good music in high school. I like well, we've already had... established that one. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I had that whole soundtrack on my uh, PSP and later iPod when I got one of those. Um, and just I I love those songs. They like the original Japanese team did like a really good job of like capturing the feeling of like the Beatles and Monkeys uh, and like different eras of rock and different styles of rock and even a little bit of rap um and then yeah just the the dub team brought that out and like made it feel super authentic so um, it had a lot of chances for failure basically yeah, and they and they it was like it wholeheartedly yeah it was like a high technical bar for the tricks they were pulling off was kaon dubbed i don't remember if kaon's been dumped at all and if I, I don't think I think Kaon had was dubbed I, by I Sentai, but I don't, don't think, know if they dubbed the songs. I don't think they dubbed the songs, but I wonder. I wonder. That that's another one that like fits into that. If anyone knows, I I Most I of the most of the time they're just I no feel dubbing like, house is crazy enough to do that. Because yeah, it's a no, lot I, of work. I, yeah, no, I I definitely they have didn't do the songs in English. Mm -hmm. But I can't for some reason remember if it got like the English dub. I don't, I don't know. That's, never that just watched popped it into if my it head. Had that. It, I mean, like, we, yeah, no. When when we watched it, we marathoned through the Japanese. Yeah, because yeah. that's the one I like. But like, now I'm trying to remember if it has a dub. I don't know. Moe, anyway, carry on. Th that brings up an interesting topic, though. Moe shows are one of those shows that I have a really hard time yeah. watching dubbed. Yep. Just any of them. That's up there with screams and stuff. Is is the general Moe appeal? Mm -hmm. Like, there's. So the way that Japanese is structured as a language with like the 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 hard syllables built into the into the alphabet, like every alphabet letter is a syllable a instead of a letter, like a consonant. Consonant is paired with a, a vowel. vowel combination. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like that, like that structure combined with just the it's, natural it tones of voice. It suits higher they, pitched voices. Yeah. It makes them easier to listen to because it's softer sounds because everything has a vowel. Yeah, there's something. I don't know. I'm not a. Fucking yeah, we're not linguistics. I'm experts. not a word scientist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, just something about Moe songs being dubbed. It always just sounds like little Moe wrong. songs or, or... So, Moe Moe shows. Yeah, Moe shows in general, yeah. but just Moe sounds. Well, I think that's also partially because we are not huge Moe fans. So mm -hmm. it, it, that's one of the things for us as like being. We like Moe shows, but we're not like, that is not listed among our favorite genres. It makes us a little more sensitive to it, I think. Maybe. I, I think it's just also like Moe noises and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people just... who love that though, right? Especially, even etchy too. It like crosses into etchy noises, right? But I feel like those are just so culturally specific though. Like diff... In know, English, we make those. different noises when we're being cute. Is, yeah, is what I'm I guess. trying to I don't say. Know. I feel just... like they're always really popular, but no. Uh, uh, maybe maybe that's just a personal hang up. I just when I hear a Moe voice in English, something at the back of my mind is always like, "There's there's something wrong about this." I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm like personally again not a fan of of Moe dubs, but I feel like they're popular in general. But but the 
English VTubers have kind of crossed that bar for me mm-hmm. in a way. Like like they've they've crossed that hurdle. They're softening and, it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but partially that might be partially because they're saying things that suit them. Mm-hmm. As opposed to going by like a script. Do you know what I mean? Or trying like, to like recreate the noises yeah. that the Japanese voice actresses that's, make. That's different too, is that it's more natural than trying to fit a scene. That's th- when the one, yeah, one of my pet peeves with the dub is when they try to do the A thing. Oh, that was Cause so that's just. Loud. Rest in peace, Trey. <laughs> you gotta make sure you move away when you do yeah, that. Yeah, but the, the, the like surprised, literally any surprise happens every single anime girl. Yeah, it does not work in English. Um, but yeah, I can't do it because that just doesn't sound natural mm-hmm. in English. And there are some things, yeah, there are some things that just, it's hard to translate. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just a personal hang up. Let me know in the comments below if I'm being wrong. overly weird and wrong about this or if you guys agree that that's something that just doesn't work for you. I don't know. So far, we're lucky, I think, that the only people who care enough to watch this are people who want to discuss things and not argue. Yeah. I mean, if you want to argue again, it's free interactions. But <laughs> but we're here to share our like less thought out meh opinions for discussion's sake. So if you disagree with anything we're saying, please, mm-hmm. please discuss. <laughs> discuss in the comments below. But for Go real, ahead. with us too, we might be able to touch on it again if we talk about that series. But anyway, um, adjust everything. <laughs> Sorry, camera. I mean, microphone. I just hit it. But um, into a big one that I like uh, is the Gundam dubs. I am huge on the Gundam dubs. Um, and I really, really, really appreciate that they dub everything generally at once. I know with Origin, they dubbed it all at once. They, they released every single language at once, um, which was freaking awesome. I just, I love that. I love that for everybody because no, but we didn't have to wait for like a Spanish dub. I think, um, I mean, I know they dubbed it into korean there was like six or seven languages they probably dub it into every place that has like a really good gunpla market yeah like yeah that but just... but they also release that all at once and, and usually that's free what I love. on their youtube channel yes, yes. i don't think crazy. origin i don't origin wasn't free because i remember paying to see the first episode of origin so nozomi um, handles the english dubs for uh for bandai i believe don't quote me on that but they're the guys yeah, you're who, not yeah you're not super into gundam but but they're the guys who did the tyler dub and they they have the distribution rights for mm-hmm. the Gundam Blu-rays that they make all those real nice special editions we yes, have. Yes. Um, yeah, no, but, but, but yeah, no, the, I, I just really appreciate, I really appreciate, like, it's one thing to sub everything all at once. Yeah. Like to, to release official subtitles all at once, but to release the dub for everybody. To like, do it Nintendo style yeah. and just have like it across. Like, and in such a wide variety. Board, yeah, yeah. That was, I really Really appreciate that. I don't remember if they did it with more than Origin because the first time that I started like streaming things for them was Origin, um, like off of YouTube. But um, because they put everything up on YouTube too. Yeah, but I mean OVA OVAs are different. Like I don't think they do that with most of the shows just because the production schedules for shows are so tight. Yeah. Whereas that's like yeah, but with with OVAs you're pressing a Blu-ray anyway. You yep. need to you know you've got the time to get. Yeah, everything. I appreciate the time though. That's the thing is yeah. I appreciate the effort of instead of just releasing it and then letting whoever has it dub it on their own time. You know, like it's, it's like even better than a simul dub. I don't know. I just the the variety of languages available. Anyway, the Gundam dubs. Um, it, it's a real smart move with like build fighters and stuff like that too, because that means like the kids who are already on YouTube mm-hmm. can just like binge that those one, shows. I don't know if they're simul dubbing that one. I'm pretty sure they were. I don't remember because I watched it again on their YouTube channel for free. But um, yeah, yeah, Gundam dubs. I really, really, really like the Origin dub. I really like the Unicorn dub. I know you love the IBO dub. Yes. I know neither of us particularly likes the Seed dub. I mean, I don't like Gundam Seed in the slightest at all. Yeah, yeah, we, dis- no. we discussed this, if you haven't seen our... our Previous podcast. Yeah, our anime origin stories. I fucking hate Gundam Seed. <laughs> but um, I'm just trying to think of the ones that like I particularly like. Um, I really liked Origin. Really liked... Um, Unicorn. Yeah, Unicorns was really good. Unicorns one that I prefer to watch in English. Um, but yeah, IBO was one that I was nervous for. Mm-hmm. Um, younger characters, t- t- I tend to be nervous for in general. Yeah. Um, like younger male characters, I think. A teenage boy and shonen stuff is one that I'm always worried about. The way um, they handle it in, in Japan versus in America is just different. And yeah, there's just But more. But I, I don't know. IBO, I, the, like... IBO is incredible. I think all of the voices sound age appropriate. 
um and just like i get the same level of like fuck yeah tech it in that i do when i'm watching it in japanese the same like hyped feeling yeah the same like like when org is yelling in japanese i get the same like fuck yeah taicho that i do <laughs> in english like i get the same like mm, um which is what makes Man. or breaks a dub for me is getting the same mm. Mikazuki's voice actor is yeah, just really good at nailed like, nailed the like the, the like emotionless. Yeah, but um, not too boring. Yeah, like like I could feel the emotion in the emotionlessness. Um, yeah, it didn't. Say, yeah, Mika doesn't sound bored. You know, Mika, Mika just sounds dead inside instead and of vaguely threatening all the time. Yeah, they just they there's always something. Mm, yep, yep. The one Gundam dub that I is kind of like a disappointment to me, I'd say, is G Gundam. That's an yeah. older one, though. Like that was before they had like the same um, the the like dubbing process they have mm -hmm. in place now. Um, G Gundam's dub is just it's kind of awkward. It was done in Alberta, I believe. Um, so everybody's got like a pretty thick Canadian accent. Uh, which is great. Including it's, the American specific one. Yeah, Chibity Crockett is the, the man, most the myth, Canadian the legend. <laughs> sound. Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend. Chibity Crockett. With his team of Gary Oak sleuths just following him around. Yep, yep. with his Canadian accent. Yeah, and yeah, he's like, he, he's like all a boot, that A. He, he like, he he's the most Canadian sounding guy and he, he's... He, he should be like a down I, or I mean I guess he should be like a New Yorker yeah I, he, I mean he is from yeah but, but that but he's like clearly Canadian everybody in that's bland and it's not like bad there's some hilarious moments in that like mm -hmm. Master Asia shouting get mad Domon Kashu <laughs> just there's a lot of yeah, memeable moments you, you know. but um yeah I I just that's one of the rare things where, like, I feel like the four kids approach would have been better, mm -hmm. you know, because four kids was all about, like, arguably, like, a little bit uh, stereotypy with their dubs. Like, they, bit, they, very, <laughs> they very much saw accents as, like a way of adding character to people mm -hmm. and you know sometimes with like joey wheeler that's like that that works um uh but sometimes with like the the pompadour guy from shaman king mm -hmm. who like just had like a, a, a kind of like a mexican accent it gets a little bit like gets a little bit iffy and like but, yeah so i feel like they took the safe route but um, but if gundam would have benefited from that because the, the core premise of it is already like a little bit a little bit um, racist, little, for want of a little, better little word. Bit, little bit. Like, like, but like, it's a tequila a, Gundam sure is a cactus. I mean, they're with a all, sombrero. they're all like really, bad. they're all really bad. But like, I feel like I prefer that they took the safe route than yeah. potentially like deeply ruining it. But I, I don't know. I feel like there was definitely more potential there. Yeah, there, there's just like. If they could walk the Speedy Gonzalez line, you know, where potential like, redub, Poten where potential, potential, potential redub. redub, you know, like where it, where give, like give people... it the Escaflone treatment, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. there's there's danger, there's like danger zones there for sure. Like it could definitely be like really really offensive, but like the complete lack of accents just throws it off. Like especially when they go to Russia and like the hardline Russian authoritarian lady is With like Dom. um yeah she's just like we will not uh surrender to Neo Japan in just like a normal voice and it should be you neo Japanese scum mm -hmm. we will break you. You know it should be like that, you know? Like mm -hmm. it, it, they should had I wish they just had some fun with it, you know? A little bit of fun, maybe not too much fun, but like that would be preferable to everybody sounding like a kid, a random guy from Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the fun they had um, with the initial D-dub. That's a one on my list um, mm -hmm. that I want to shout out to. It's very goofy, especially in the beginning. And unfortunately, they didn't finish it. I have no idea why. I'm sure I can look it up. but I Probably money. I mean, who knows? I have no idea. They didn't finish it, though, and that makes me sad. I would do anything to get the movies dubbed. I know some people have some feelings about the movies, not having Eurobeat, whatever, back on is incredible. <laughs> they save it. But like, I would do anything to have those movies dubbed. I think if they could dub those movies, I like... I feel like Sentai did dub them. Nope. 
Nope, they did not. I would, mm, I cry. I feel like Initial D would have a chance at like another wave if they could dub those movies. But the original dub is really, really good. It's so well cast. And like Takumi is again, the perfect level of like bored without being bored. He just sounds like a fucking airhead. Like they really capture the counterculture attitude. They really capture that there's nothing going on for Takumi. He's Like, like- cars yeah like there's no drifting not cars not like um but yeah it's it's really good they like had a lot of fun with it too um one of my favorite lines in the first season or in the first stage um is women can't drive which isn't in the japanese version Mm-hmm. Um, they just, they, they, they're, I don't remember. I have it on my Twitter. I took a photo of what they say, but they were just like, like I checked, I went back and I changed it and I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> like it doesn't fit. He's just out of nowhere. He's like, women can't drive. <laughs> and like, I, I just, it's so it's Where, where's so the funny. outrage over that westernization yeah, of come Japanese on, guys. values? Those damn, those damn censorships coming in, <laughs> changing our scripts and <laughs> keep turning it away from the real meaning behind it. Damn it. <laughs> uproar. Um, but yeah, the initial D-dub is just so much fun, but not so much fun that it like ruins the heart of the series. I... And I, I think wish it was they a, kept going. It was a victim, I think, of the same thing that happened to um, uh, Detective Conan. Because Funimation also dubbed that. I know nothing about Detective Conan. They, it's really good. Yeah, I really I mean, like, I know what it is, but... It had a really good dub. Like, um, they went 130 episodes deep in it, mm-hmm. um, in, which sounds like a lot, but there's over 1,000 episodes of Detective Conan mm-hmm. now. You can't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, a plug it, somewhere. <laughs> it just didn't take off the way that they wanted it to. I think they were with that and initial D. I think mm-hmm. there was like a hope that it would be like one of the next big things like I Dragon Ball. I want to go on and on about initial D because I don't think I mean, I I'm, I know nothing about how popular it was back in the day, but I don't think it currently gets the recognition it deserves because everybody thinks it's just a closed off series that you need to know what's going on about the topic in you know no but they make it super accessible yeah, i'm like car stupid. like completely you're, stupid you're like and the, I, the stupidest <laughs> i can appreciate like all of the stuff they, like they make it really accessible they yeah, like i and it, i wish i could go on forever but like yeah the dub is so good and it's one that i would also potentially suggest people watch instead of the japanese yeah, I mean that's how that's how we. I mean, did unfortunately, it. yeah, unfortunately, you do have to switch it up because the last couple stages were never dubbed. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you know, it's, it's still... on my list of things I want to suggest to people who might be looking for a dub to watch. That is, and because the show's visuals are like <laughs> incredible, <laughs> incredible. Um, Literally dub, any example from the first season. But yeah, that's one of those shows that I think you can just listen to in the background yes. and and just like appreciate the sound design and you'll get 90% of what makes Initial D great. Yeah. Um, especially with the first season because they hadn't quite figured out how to create that sense of momentum of with their PS1 cars. <laughs> um, yeah, please watch Initial D. Please watch Thanks Initial D. I made, yeah. I made a whole video about it. Yes, at my, at my request. At your request. Thank you. I, that's like, I love that video. I love that video. It's such a good video. Thank and you. People didn't watch it enough. More, More people got to watch it. More people watch my Initial D video than Initial D. Yes. But Initial D is, it, it's like truly like a classic. Yep. Um, and not enough people give it the shot it needs because it looks like you got you to gotta know about cars to like it, right? You it know? It also is like the worst aged classic anime maybe ever. Yeah. Um, Cause like it, it was one of the pioneers of CGI and digital animation. Um, they tried some wild shit with the first season that they were like, this looks terrible. We're never doing this again. Let's figure something better out between seasons. I'm a big fan um, of when they put an actual movie on the screen instead of they like actually put a clip like, like of, of a, a drifting clip on the TV screen. In one of yeah. the episodes, they were just like, fuck yeah, <laughs> slap a video on there. Just actually, yeah. Just... They're all like gathered around the TV and there's an actual video on the TV. 
but like they like they didn't have the software to put 2d animation on top of Mm -hmm. 3d animation the way that they do now like like they were literally figuring it out before the common technology um was like like just standardized um so like you know they they dropped like 2d cardboard cutouts of characters into the 3d backgrounds and just like it's, it's a relic. It's great. It, it's great. But it is actually legitimately like one of the best shows I've ever seen. And all of, despite how distractingly bad that CGI gets, it just, it drops away and you just get immersed in it. I think the dub makes it more accessible too, because it's easier to uh, absorb the car information they're giving you because they do having a main character who knows nothing about cars is great. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but have, the dub helps I think somebody who doesn't know anything about cars easier take in that information too, um, which is I think why I'd also suggest it. Anyway, mm-hmm. all you, all me. Okay, smooth let me pull transition. Up another um, another dub that like from the same era as Beck that I think everybody agrees on as a classic um, and was one of like my formative turning into an anime nerd anime um, is Bacano. Um, that one they like really tried to get like authentic 1930s um new york slang and that that makes that dub in my opinion better than the sub because it's one thing you know watching a bunch of gangsters running around new york speaking japanese Mm -hmm. right but it's another thing where they're like um you know it's a woozy it's a wazzy it's or 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 um yeah, my name's Firo Prochineso. Like, like you know, just that that like authentic New York Italian accent, just like really adds like a, another layer of this feels like a good gangster gangster film. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you know. <laughs> um, and like, man, they had so much fun with it. Um, the guy who plays Lad Russo just goes to town like he chews all the scenery just eats the whole mic i'm not gonna do it but i really want to uh, <laughs> um speaking of chinese i move mine don't mind me go ahead yeah uh but yeah no like like that that dub is just like it super immerses you in the setting um it adds a lot that that's one of the things where i think a dub can can outstrip the sub is if it enhances the setting of the story you know like like re-zero is also like a european um based uh fantasy land Mm -hmm. so like it feels natural for the characters to be speaking english there another one that has like long been one of my favorite dubs is romeo x juliet Mm-hmm. That one they actually like tried to get like iambic pentameter and like classic Shakespearean language into the dub and they did a really good job of it and it just like to quickly interject before uh, yeah. in the same circle as uh, Bacano I'm not gonna go into it but I think the Gerara dub was really good um, yes it's one that I remember rewatching as the dub and being able to get through it as a rewatch which for me you know. Um, but yeah, I think just just shout outs to to Dorara. If you've never seen it, the dub of that is also good. Mm-hmm. Can't talk about Bacano without overshadowing it with Dorara. <laughs> with <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I mean, with the uh, like hundred episodes of Dorara now, I wish there was more Bacano. It's so good. Anyway, carry on. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Romeo X Juliet. Yeah, Romeo X Juliet. Like they tried to make it feel like a Shakespeare play and bring in some of that like elevated classic language um and i think that that dub just like sings in a way that the sub doesn't um didn't we watch something recently that had really bad accents yeah uh the dragon's dogma dub i was complaining about a lot sorry i just had some kind of i was like yeah what are the the bad If, if thou gaze it I just remember gazes. recently cringing at yeah, that kind yeah. of speak. Carry on, Romeo. And yeah, yeah. I mean that—that's kind of all I want to say about that it. Like, good. <laughs> um, it was just you know, like they really got that like old English feel to it. Had it was um, a, a potential failure, and they did it. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's one area where I think like 
dubs can can really shine is when you're like trying to capture like a European or American um, setting, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like or or a Canadian one. They should bring the G Gundam uh, cast back to do Super Lovers. I th- <laughs> God, that. An- <laughs> Why can't they have a good anime set in Canada? Uh, IBO. I mean, that gets like two episodes in Edmonton. But yeah, like, G-, G Gundam. They have that moment. Like, what else do we all have? The- like, why did we have to get the goddamn child predator one? Like, yeah, we got child predators. There's a couple blonde girls in some horror anime who are Canadian. Oh yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Uh. In G J Boo, the cat girl is from Vancouver. It's just a weird thing. She's a Vancouver exchange student. Um. But yeah. Uh. Yeah, no, uh, G Gundam, I remember in G Gundam, the like, the extent of their Canadian geography knowledge was they have a fight at Niagara, Niagara Falls, Falls, and then the bad guy's like, okay, go meet me at my cabin over by the Rocky Mountains, and like, the other I don't, I don't know how much you guys know about Canadian geography, um, but we're the second largest country on Earth. Those two landmarks are about as far from each other as things get in Canada. And by the Rocky Mountains covers approximately like a good, it it covers like half of the length of the Northern Hemisphere. I would hope most people have seen a map. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If you've seen a map, you know that, but. Anyway, we're getting off topic into Canada stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I have I have one thing left on my list. I have mm-hmm. one thing that we can't shoehorn in in any way that I just I need to talk about, and this is one that I think everybody agrees on, but I just need to give a shout out to it in case is Gurren Lagan. Gurren Lagan. The Gurren Lagan dub. Oh my god! I watched it as a dub first, um, and it is just like incredible it is i mean i know i've been saying that about every single one you have been but but that doesn't that doesn't mean it's not true yeah it's like, just like it is another one that just like ibo captures the hype that you need like there's the the, the kamina's like true like energy and his true like spirit is captured perfectly and his drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens yeah it's just i i i would sometimes yeah suggest that one over the original again not that i think it's like factually better mm-hmm. but i would say that like if i had to suggest one to someone the gurin lagan dub is like mm, that's all i have to say i don't know how to it's good it's good it, kamina still makes me want to do the impossible in english be the invisible robot fight, fight the, the power. power yeah um like, that's i should have thought more about what i wanted to say but i feel like i don't need to sell that one it's it's it's, it's just it's everybody really knows good. that current lagon in english is uh, in the same like imaishi vein um uh panty and stocking yes the yeah. panty i don't know why we didn't think of that one the panty and stocking dub is like spot on perfect i think yeah like, like I, I think i would rather watch it in english just from like a comedy standpoint of my taste you know but that's another one that like really does benefit from um you know western westernization yeah because it's you know it's attempting to capture american style cartoons in Mm -hmm. like a very vulgar way um it's also like about america in like not subtle ways (laughs) all all they care about is is food and sex um and guns lots of guns uh but it's just a really good dub though yeah yeah kill a kill too mm-hmm. kill a kill great dub great dub yeah all, uh, all i'm just of like going down my brain stuff. yeah now i'm just going down all of those have only any of them have ever no i mean some of the earlier ones like man uh jean's french accent in the nadia dub oh. is a little bit uh how you say <laughs> how you say but um yeah no for the most part gynax and trigger really benefited from good dubs across the board ava's kind of the i mean ava was the first one was like as good as it got in those early dub days and the Hot second take, one, i like the netflix one better what what you like the Net- what moving on <laughs> oh wow okay carry on <laughs> well, well yeah we'll just move on from that <laughs> Hurry up, hurry up, come on. Before the comments come on. explode. Come on. bring something else up. Uh, uh, 
we're basically like we're at the end. Okay, like I've, lists, I've only got. Yeah. Um, you had a couple that you were disappointed by, or not disappointed. We, we want our wish like, list ones first. Which, right. I mean, I mine. I only have one on my. You only have one each. Too, yeah. Right? Yeah. We the series that we most want to see dubbed. I would love to see a Galco Chan dub. Mm-hmm. I I think that that dubbing Galco, it's like it's it's got the right like style of comedy mm-hmm. that with the right amount of attention could be great. It doesn't need any like hard translation figuring out like there's no you know yeah and like it raunchy comedies have high potential to be great i yeah. don't know um and i think that it would really give galco the push it needed to to get more people to watch it and it's short come on <laughs> uh so who would you cast in i it? have no idea i'm not good at that thing that's the thing i know some people are like fantasy football teams but voice actors i'm not good at that i never like have any like expectation if that makes sense it's just i don't know if that makes sense like i don't i don't like i i it's very rare that i see a name and i tie it to like oh i'm gonna like that or not yeah that makes sense i forget most anime voice actors names in english and japanese that's just a fault of my brain yeah i just names yeah but so i don't know who i would cast but Uh, i don't think they'd be particularly tricky that's the other thing there's no one in there that like is like a risk of not getting the translation voice it needs or they need so like yeah i think galco as like a series would benefit from it and that it's got high potential to be real funny so my let's rephrase that what english dubbed characters do you think would apply to i have no idea no you still can't okay all right (laughs) can't put my two brain cells my two brain cells on the spot like that Wait, can we give an interesting shout out that I don't uh-huh. think people know? Because I'm looking right beside us right here uh, on our shelf is a Galco figure. And right next to the Galco figure, did you guys know that Jessica Nikri did the voice for of the Sonico in the Annie? Uh, the, the Sonny Annie is what they call it. Sonico, mm-hmm. the animation. That's crazy. That That's is- all I wanted. I just remembered that. That was crazy. I remember when like that news came out. It was like, y- What? <laughs> Like, I don't know. That's just freaking crazy. A cosplayer, the, somebody who cosplayed something went so far as to become the actual anime voice, not like voice clips in a game either. Like, anyway, so it's just right next to our Galco figure over there. And I I don't know how many people knew that, that she was like literally the anime voice actor. That was it. like a really hype moment. Too. That was like, crazy. Like it was just people... weird. From like the cosplay community side of it too, it was like, like, anyway, go ahead. Um, What's your wish list? My my wish list, the one series I really want to see dubbed so badly is um, Recreators. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shocking to no one. Which is going to trigger somebody in the comments being like, shut up about Recreators, Jeff. No, Stop no. having a different opinion from me about a show. Um, yeah, no, the, that... Like, there's so much potential in, like, a dub of that because there's all those different characters... Um, who hit like all of those different archetypes? Um, yeah, no, I, I asked you the question of which characters you dub as who, but now, now that See, I'm it's trying hard. to think of it's it, hard. yeah, no, once you're actually like on the spot, it's like. I'm it, looking at our figures too to see if there's like anybody else that I'm like who hasn't been dubbed yet. I'm gonna mm-hmm. move really fast because I gotta adjust. Um, who behind us hasn't been dubbed yet? That like. So, like, I'm just trying to, like, blitz it in my brain. Um, I think, um, yeah, so the the main character of Recreators, I think, like, Benjamin Diskin would probably do, like, a good job. He's got that sort of, like, crackly, um, awkward nerd voice. Um, and, like, he gets, he, he gets challenged in some really interesting ways. Mm-hmm. Um, Meteora, oh, Meteora is hard because you know it's hard to cast your waifus or your husbandos. You this know? is really random, but also looking at our shelf because that's the easiest way to jog my memory. Um, is you know what anime I would be? I don't think it did it. I don't know if it got a dub. Maybe we'll have to. I don't know. I'll look it up after. But I would be worried ish about a dub that I don't know if it would carry over well. Is Vesda plot? Vesda plot that I, definitely I, did not get a dub, and that would definitely be like impossible. To dub, I feel like I don't think it could ever. I don't think anything like would how translate well in any way. Like 
Yeah, I just like, don't think. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, there's things I've said that about, and then it's blown me away. But like, I don't think Zvezda plot is one that is. I think I think I'd they could probably dubbed. get Kate really good. You know. Yeah, but like the I think a lot of the like. But at the same time, her like charm is very much that like um, the contrast of her like being like megalomaniacal and then having like the Hakase from Nichi Joe voice. Yeah, almost. I think a lot of the plays on words too wouldn't because they're mm-hmm. like some of them are sounds and I don't know. There's I just don't. That's one that I don't think I would really like be pushing for a dub for the dub that I think would be like the hardest to do out of anything would be show again Roku Rakugo Shinju like. Yeah, I don't know if I don't say Zvezda would be the hardest, but that's just when I'm looking around back there. But yeah, that you're right on that one too. That's like a cultural one. Yeah, yeah, just like that's not. a style of performance that yeah. you just don't have in English. And then to add another layer to that, you're talking about like actual classic Japanese literature. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in and like some of those, like some of the wordplay in those in those uh, performances is so specific and so difficult to translate. You would also have to get actors who are as good as the Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju actors. Oops. And that is like, with no disrespect to the dubbing community of, of uh, any, you know, anywhere, just like, high that high. is a really high hurdle to clear. Yeah, that's, um, fine, though. that's fine though. Yeah, it's it's just that that I think is like the ultimate dub challenge. Getting that one right would be only only like an idol anime. I think would be harder if you were dubbing all the songs in an idol anime. Would be like harder than that. Um, oh no! Yes, I can. What it? What series oh, is it? Yes. Give me that. Uh, Itadaki Seiki. Give me that. Uh, <laughs> uh, put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Fine. I have to say something. I, everything's blocked. Don't worry. This one. Um, while the actual physical version, which is available on Faku, uh, is great, I need to say that, oh, Jesus Christ. Not that I am someone who has seen many hentai dubs, for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. Um, the dub for that is i think one of the greatest hentai dubs like the highest quality and like best translated over that i've heard ever like there's there's like a high level of like uh failure potential with hentai dubs right Mm -hmm. real high level of (laughs) of failure potential um there's been a lot of comedic ones um, that have not intended to be comedic and have intended to be comedic. And I know there's a really big community of like indie um, hentai, hentai dubbers. dubbers, like a really good community of indie hentai dubbers. But this was dubbed a while ago. It was dubbed like a few years ago. And it just, it's, I've never heard. And I'm sure there's been more since then because clearly whoever did it is good. But um, it's just like an honorable mention of a shockingly good dub. Like they took... That I don't want to get too like not safe for Rick into it. They just they took, um, how do I put it? Things that are are integral to to the culture of hentai, like voice acting wise and stuff. Like things that are like stylistically in hentai, and they translated it well, and adapted it well to Western standards of consumption. I I wouldn't know. I haven't seen it. I just, I yeah. That sounds sketchy when I say it, but I actually ha- haven't seen it. It's one um, I've seen even discussed a lot. Like it's like the 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 gold standard. Yeah, I see it discussed. I follow a few. Um, so it's like the cowboy bebop of of uh, hentai. Yeah, dubs. it's like well, I think. I mean, again, maybe there are because I'm not deep into this, but maybe there are other ones that came before it that were good. But from what I gather, it is like the on a pedestal, shockingly good. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, most hentai dubs are not great. That's like, what I mean. It's like it's it's like I would say. Like I think every anime fan out there, or most anime fans out there, have been exposed to at least some quantity of the Bible Black dub at some point so at I, like I a would drunk say, party or something. I would say most hentai dubs t- seem to sound a level up from indie, right? Mm-hmm. But a level below anime. But the Itadaki Seiki one, 
I Felt would say, professional. I would say, if, I, maybe it was, I have never looked up who did it, but I would say the voice acting quality was that of like an etchy anime, like mm-hmm. the sounds and stuff were that like of an etchy dub. Well, I mean, it's so easy to make that feel awkward. Exactly. Um, and they didn't. Anyway, that's all. I just, that popped into my head is when we're talking about figures and stuff. But the flip side of, of hentai dubs is because they can be so awkward so easily, they can really go into so bad it's good territory. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the most the important one. one of those. And, you know, since we're on this topic. Um, I feel like I should share with you, uh, one of the most important pieces of curse knowledge that exists in my brain, which is that Dan Green, the voice of Yugi Moto, um, used to dub hentai. I think a lot of people know this, but, uh, but, every- or, or I think a lot of people who are like into the hentai community in general know this, but not everybody, everybody, so go ahead, sorry. For yeah, me. yeah, and um, just do yourself a favor, look up Dan Green Temptation. Maybe this we is... can include one clip from it here. Maybe, maybe. But, <laughs> but, but um, you know, if you've ever, uh, if you've ever wanted to hear both versions of Yugi Moto because the main character of that has like two personalities and he does the exact same voices for it. Um, if you've, if you've ever wanted to hear Yugi Moto say stuff like, ah, oh, man, I could really go for some alcohol and some anal. <laughs> like... I knew you were going to, it's, it's really something. And I, I think they have it on YouTube. I think you can find like the best of clips. Probably. It's been scrubbed from YouTube a couple times, unfortunately. I'm sure it's, it's there. It's sure real it's there. filthy. It's real filthy, but like, um, just, I, I know of... I've heard it before for sure. But like, like he goes full, ju- just like you just activated my trap card, Kaiba. But like talking about yeah. some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that that was our. I mean, that was not uh, a. What? Yeah. I, I just want to insert off of that that the Yu Gi Oh dub is fucking incredible. Fuck you, fight me. <laughs> you have to stop leaning into the microphone when you yell because it's like you get louder. You notice I do it when I get quieter. Whereas you I'm always, just like, <laughs> you get louder as you get closer, which is like difficult Trey, for the feel for the bad dubs. for Trey. Sorry, Trey. Feel but, bad for poor Trey. But fuck you, fight me. Yes. Seto Kaiba's an icon. <laughs> He's got so many good lines in that dub. Um, I guess so, we're going to, we were planning to wrap this off with the dubs that disappointed us. Yeah, not like, there's, uh, you know, I don't think any of these are like, catastrophic you know they're just like mm. uh, yeah i mean could do without it you know for me so for me like my biggest disappointment with a dub it's not even like a disappointment it was just like a change i didn't like was the ranma dub um they did the first three seasons at one studio and then they shifted the next four to ocean studio in vancouver mm-hmm. so suddenly ranma who had like his own voice that i was used to changed into Richard Ian Cox and it just felt like Inuyasha again. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was just weird. No disrespect to Mr. Cox, you know, Kagome. He, he like, he, he, it's just jarring. Yeah. It's, it's, it was jarring for, yeah. Yeah. And that, and it, coupled with the fact that that is when the episodes themselves also get kind of bad. Yeah. Um, that just like really tanked that dub for me in a, in a, in a, in a powerful way. Mm-hmm. Um, which is yours. I mean, did you have another one or no, that's that was it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the one that like, there's not many cause I am a dub fan, right? Uh-huh. I tend to like dubs also because they help keep my attention more. Um, but the one that like I had high hopes for, or not the highest of hopes, but I had hopes for, and I was disappointed and I kind of wish didn't exist is the Hatalia dub. They went with the accents like you mentioned for G Gundam and it was, I think, not the right call. So, so wait, I need to stop you there because, um... So you were disappointed by the Hatalia dub. Yes, they should not have which done the impl- Which implies that... You watched the Hitalia sub, and you were a Hitalia. Someone help me! 